Now we want to move on to talk about labor market equilibrium. When looking at a labor market equilibrium, it means that we are putting the labor supply and the labor demand together and look at what is the equilibrium of the market. Given that for the labor market, the price is the real wages and the quantity is the quantity of labor supply and the labor demanded, so the labor market equilibrium is talking about what should be the equilibrium wage rate and the quantity of the labor supply equal to the quantity of the labor demanded. For that particular wage, it is called the market clearing wages. And for that particular level of the quantity of labor supply equal the quantity of labor demand, we call it the full employment. So now let's draw the graph of the labor supply and labor demand curve on the same graph and indicate the scenario that there exists a labor market equilibrium. So this diagram illustrates the labor market equilibrium. The wage rate is the price of the labor market, so it is on the vertical axis, and the quantity of labor supply and the labor demanded are on the horizontal axis because they are the quantity of the labor market. What we know is that the labor supply curve slopes upward and it is a function of the real wages, the wealth, the future wages, the working age population, and the labor participation rate. We know that when the real wages got changed, given that the labor supply curve already captured the relationship between how does the quantity of labor supply responds to a changes in the real wages, we know that when there is a change in the real wages, then it will associate with changing the quantity of labor supply by moving along the labor supply curve. But when the wealth got changed, the future wages got changes, the working age population got changed, and the labor participation rate got changed, then it will associate with shifting of the labor supply curve. Because when given the same wages, then if the wealth got increased, then people will choose to supply less labor. Same thing for the future wages. If the future wage increase, it is not about the current wages increase. Then again, people will decrease their current labor supply. So given the same wages, the labor supply got less, so it shifts the labor supply curve to the left. Finally, when the working age population got increased or the labor participation rate got increased, then both of them indicate that given the same level of the real wages, the quantity of labor supply should increase. Therefore, it will associate with right shift of the labor supply curve. So how about the labor demand curve? We know the labor demand curve is a curve that slopes downward. When the real wages got higher, then the quantity of the labor demand got less. Therefore, when there is a change in the real wages, then again it is associated with moving along the labor demand curve. That is, the wages higher, then the firm will choose to demand less worker. But then when there is an increase in the productivity or the capital input, it means that given the same level of the wages, the firm will choose to demand more labor. Because of that, it will associate with shifting of the labor demand curve. So then now we already have the labor demand curve and the labor supply curve in the graph. And then the crossing point of this two point has a quantity that is the quantity of the labor supply equal to the quantity of labor demanded. And we have a name for this point that is called the full employment. And then this point also have a labor price such that the quantity of labor supply equal to the quantity of labor demand. For this particular real wages, we call it the market clearing wage because at this wage rate, the quantity of labor supply equal to the quantity of the labor demand and it indicates the market clearing. That is, there is no excess demand nor there is excess labor supply. 
so the market clears so in here the point that the supply curve and the demand curve intersect for the labor market it is the the price will be the market clearing wages and the level of the labor that's the quantity of labor supply equal the quantity of labor demanded is called full employment now i want to move on to talk about the labor market condition related terminologies before we formally introduce four labor market condition related terminologies i want you to look at the following graph so we have the total population of a nation somehow we can separate into two groups one is the group that is too young to work or they are institutionalized for those in institutionalized includes for example the students the students are in school so that they cannot work the other is people in jail that they cannot work as well so then there is a portion of the population that they cannot work on the other hand we have another group of people that is adult population they are the group of people they can work and then we further separate this group of people into two which are some people willing to work and the others are not willing to work and then inside a group of people that are willing to work we separate into two as well one group of people that they are working and the other group of people are not working so then we separate the population into these couple categories so now we want to introduce the labor market condition related terminologies the first term we want to look at is called labor force it is the total number of people that is willing to work by definition it will be the summing up of the total employed plus the total unemployed so then in graph it is the concept that is highlighted it in pink that is we have a summing up of the people that is working and not working now let's look at the second terminology which is called unemployment rate this is the terminology we heard quite a lot in the media the definition for that is it is the total number of people got unemployed relative to the size of the labor force so then given that we define the labor force is the total employed plus the total unemployed therefore we know for the unemployment rate it is talking about the percentage of the people that is willing to work but somehow did not get a job so then in graph the total labor force is the part of the oval that is highlighted in pink and then the portion of the population that is not working is the number of people they are willing to work but not able to get a job so then the unemployment rate tell us what is the relative size of the people that is willing to work but not working so it is the percentage of the pink that is somehow highlighted in purple the next terminology we want to look at is called the labor participation rate so the definition for that is the labor force divided by the adult population so in graph you will notice that now we are expanding our focus when we are talking about the unemployment rate labor force we are focusing on the portion of the population that are willing to work now we include also the population that is not willing to work but it is inside the population that can work so then the labor participation rate tell us what is the percentage of the adult population that they can work and willing to work so then in here in graph it is the portion of the green area relative to the yellow shaded area the last terminology we want to look at is called employment rate the definition is the total number got employed relative to the adult population in graph you will see we are focusing on the yellow shaded area as well but we are looking at what is the 
portion that is highlighted in purple relative to the size that is highlighted in yellow. And so that is about the employment rate. So then now I would like you to think about if we add up the employment rate and the unemployment rate, will it equal one? So now let's put the definition for unemployment rate and employment rate side by side to see when we add up the unemployment rate and the employment rate, will it equal one? It turned out that if you look at the definition in the equation, you will see that, hey, it's true that the total number of people got unemployed plus the total of people got employed will be the labor force. However, for the employment rate, the denominator is adult population instead of labor force. Therefore, they do not add up to be one. In graph, you will see that even though the employment rate is talking about the purple shaded areas, but it is talking about the purple shaded areas relative to the yellow shaded area. However, when we are talking about the unemployment rate, we are talking about the purple shaded area relative to the pink shaded area. Even though both the purple shaded area add up to be the pink shaded area, but given that for the employment rate, the denominator is about the yellow shaded area, so they do not add up to be one. So why we want to define a variable that it turned out to be not adding up to be one? That is because we are reporting the statistics. And then if we report the unemployment rate, if the employment rate is one minus the unemployment rate, it is not worthwhile to have another column to report that because people can just simply use uh, the any calculator or have the software just simply click one minus the unemployment rate and then they are going to get the number. So then to make the most use of the statistics, we define another variable which is called employment rate. We want to know what is the percentage of the population that can work in fact is working and that is the employment rate talking about. The unemployment tell us what is the percentage of people that is willing to work but not getting a job. So then this statistic can help the policy maker to think about ways to help those people to find a job. For getting to know the employment rate, that if the unemployment rate is high, then the employment rate will be low. But if the unemployment rate is already being low, if the employment rate is low, it implies that there are so many people that can work but they are too lazy and choose not to work. Then the government need to think about way to resolve the issue and they will be able to improve the total productivity of the nation. So this concludes the discussion related to labor market equilibrium. And that's the end of today's lecture.